All right, let's talk about Biba Doobie. Biba Doobie is a 19-year-old Filipino songwriter from West London and is taking the music industry by storm. She recently signed to Dirty Hit Records, who has artists such as, I don't know, The 1975, The Japanese House, and Wolf Alice on the roster. She's currently direct support for Claro on a full US run and she embarks on a UK headlining tour in November. Biba Doobie has 1.2 million monthly Spotify listeners and she just released her new EP Space Cadet on October 15th, making it her third release in 2019 and her fifth release between 2018 and 2019. In this video, I'll discuss Biba Doobie's musical progression and what makes Bee so special. Bee is very interesting in the way that she has landed on everyone's radar. For starters, I'm going to say the thing that everyone knows, but if you don't know about Biba Doobie, well, she started playing guitar back in 2017. You know, normally when you learn an instrument, you're pretty bad at learning songs, let alone writing your own music. However, Bee's first song, Coffee, is the first song she ever wrote. Yeah, ever wrote. Coffee became a hit and gained thousands of listens in a couple days and now has over 10 million plays on Spotify. Is this song perfect? Well, no, but B will be the first to tell you that. In an interview with Complex, looking back on the song, she stated, I realize I can't play to a click. Coffee is all over the place. The tempo is so whack. Coffee is very DIY, with B not keeping a set tempo and the song being recorded on what sounds like an iPhone. Not saying these are bad things, but just, you know, th they're just facts. Despite the small discrepancies with Coffee, you can't deny it's a catchy tune that showcases where B can go from here. If Coffee is B's first song, then it's only up from there. And keep in mind, most people's first song is trash, so this is actually saying a lot if this is her first song that she wrote. After Coffee, she released a cover of Karen O's song, The Moon Song, and then released an EP entitled Lice in February of 2018. Lice is a four-track EP that features either acoustic or electric guitar or the combination of both. It's a simple EP with just guitars and B's dreamy vocals on top of them. Going with the same feel of Lice, in December of 2018, B released a seven-track EP entitled Patched Up. Patched Up is actually the first release that I found out about Biba Doobie. Patched Up features the same tone as Lice in the sense that Patched Up is showcasing that stripped-down style with B and her guitar in the forefront of the release. With that being said, B did experiment more on Patched Up with vocal layering, harmonies, as well as some light production elements, adding percussion here and there, and also adding light synth pads to add some depth. The second track, Tired, has a really nice buildup where you hear B add more and more elements throughout the song until drums fully come in at the end. My favorite song, and what I think is the best song in this release, would have to be If You Want To. Genius recently uploaded a video about this song where B talks about it, so if you want more backstory, go check that out. People have kind of the perception that it's um, a love song, but it's not. It's literally just how I can't sleep at night. And also, sleep paralysis is terrifying, is terrifying. And at times it's like, you know, I mean, every time you get it, you feel like you're stuck in it and you can't really escape. This song is the only song that features full band throughout, and it's a taste of what Biba Doobie can do with a full band going forward. Overall, Patched Up is a solid release that keeps me interested in what she has in store for her future releases. B wasted no time putting out music. She signed to UK-based record label Dirty Hit and released another 7-track EP entitled Love Worm back in April of 2019. Loveworm finally features an entire release with a full band and it really brings out the best in Biba Doobie. You can noticeably hear the progression of B's guitar playing, lyricism, and overall songwriting. Loveworm is a very vulnerable record describing a period of time where B and her boyfriend Soren went through a rough patch. There's even a song named Soren. <laughs> it's fine though, I think they're still dating to my knowledge, so good for them for working it out. Anyway, in that same interview with Complex that I mentioned earlier, when asked if she was hesitant about sharing this personal relationship with the world, B stated, I was so scared. I thought I was gonna be annihilated by Soren. I'm a big believer in writing music based on personal experiences, and I think that always produces the best art. Loveworm is a great example of this. I could read a bunch of lyrics and try to dissect everything, but I think you just need to listen to the album to understand its full context and understand like its full weight. Because there's not one standout song that is more vulnerable than the next. All these songs are incredibly touching for anyone that has gone through heartache with a loved one. Loveworm is a lush, dreamy, and honest release told by a teenager that has no intention of holding back how she feels, and it's fantastic. 
I honestly cannot recommend this album enough. In July of 2019, B put out an acoustic version of Love Worm called Love Worm Bedroom Sessions. The really cool thing about this release is on her YouTube channel, she has a video of her performing every song acoustically. And I think those are the actual takes on each song on this album. This is a big throwback to her original stripped back style found on Lice. The release is really cool. It seems like these songs are one take performances where you can hear little mistakes here and there, but honestly, I love that. I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. Little mistakes here and there and, and minor discrepancies adds character to a track. It makes it feel more in the moment and I think it works really well for these songs specifically because they're very personal. Well, 2019 is coming to a close and with the release of Love Worm and Love Worm Bedroom Sessions, you think Biba Doobie would be done putting out music, right? Nah, screw that. On October 15th, she released a five track EP called Space Cadet. And honestly, this is probably her best release to date. Space Cadet starts off with the song Are You Sure, where it introduces a soft guitar chord progression that is familiar territory for Biba Doobie, but on the break, you're hit with this wave of drums, distorted guitars, and bass unlike anything you've heard on any of her previous releases. The song really sets the tone for the rest of the record. The record really leans into the full band component without it sounding unnatural from what we've been accustomed to with B's previous efforts. Her influences of Pavement, Dinosaur Jr., and Sonic Youth really shine throughout Space Cadet. One of my favorite songs on this release would have to be Sun More Often. The song combines everything I love about Biba Doobie. It has a soft, love worm-esque verse that has me hooked when B comes in with the opening lyrics keep your head down low because is it the sound or is it the way things go and then it has this build during the pre-chorus with thumping drums until the chorus climaxes with the lyrics you should go out and see the sun more often while the guitars are playing big trashy chords i really enjoy all of biba doobie's music but I think this is my favorite album, and I also think this is her best album. This album introduces a lot of new sounds that I knew she was capable of doing, but I didn't think that she would do it. I never thought I would hear big distorted choruses with Biba Doobie's music, but hey, now that she's done it, I am hooked. I hope she continues to go through the sound more. I wish there were more songs on Space Cadet, but then again, I cannot complain with B giving her audience 19 songs to listen to this year. That is a lot of music, and I'm really grateful for that. Between 2017 and 2019, B has released a total of 33 songs. Her entire musical progression from the literal first song she ever wrote to her current best song is online for us to check out and get lost in. There are not many artists you can say that about, and I think that's what makes her so special. You're able to see her progression from start to finish, and you're able to have this idea that, hey, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can pick up a guitar and I can start playing music and I can start putting it out there and seeing what happens. I feel like she's a big inspiration for people to just pick up an instrument and try it. So good job, B. She's an artist that is truly honest and transparent and is proof that anyone can get recognized with good songs. I cannot wait to see her perform in Atlanta at the Claro Show, and I cannot wait to see what she has in store for us as she grows more as an artist. And hey, there's still a couple months left in 2019, so who's to say she won't drop another EP? So there's that. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching this video. Leave a like, leave a comment. On this channel, you'll find live sessions with some cool bands like Honey, Noah Gunderson, Lunar Vacation, The Sidekicks. I can go on forever. We have like 70 live sessions. Go check out those live sessions if you're looking for some new music. Be sure to subscribe down below for some more videos. We're going to have a lot of videos coming out weekly, so you're not going to want to miss out on that. Anyway, I'm going to go listen to Are You Sure. See ya.